Hey what's up everyone and welcome back to a new video on the channel. So in today's video we are going to check out how we can start our very own e-commerce website in 2021. I'll be walking you through all of the steps of setting up your site, walking through the settings, all the design elements and making sure that you are set up to go with your new website. So by watching this tutorial you're going to go from a absolute beginner to having your very own website up and running by the end of this video. I also want a huge shout out to Wix for sponsoring today's video. Wix is an online website builder which lets you create professional professional looking e-commerce websites within minutes. But with that being said, let's just get right into this tutorial. Hopefully you enjoy. Okay, so the very first thing you should do is click on the very top link down in the description. This is gonna take you to the page that I'm currently on. It's gonna be easier for you to just follow along this tutorial. So just make sure you use that link in the description. And when you do use the link in the description, it does also give me some kickback when you start using Wix. So I do really appreciate that. Uh, it does help support the channel. I do create this content for free i'm not selling you any course i'm not trying to sell you anything here i'm just giving you my free information and my ideas and my point of view of starting your own site so just by clicking on the top link in the description you will be taken to this page and when you are on this page right here which says sell online with wix this the sign of this page could be potentially different when you are watching this video but in most cases the steps will be fairly similar so even though this page looks different when you click on it the steps should be fairly similar if you just follow along as best as you can the very first thing you should do is just click on start selling now when you click on start selling now you will come to the sign up page so here you will have the option to sign up with either your email directly or you can sign up with a facebook or google account in my case, I will just sign up with my own email right away. Uh, so I'm just going to skip this part because I have to fill out this information. But just make sure you fill out this information or just log in with Facebook and Google. Once you have signed up to an account, you will be taken to this page right here. This is going to ask you if you want to answer some questions to help Wix understand your business and your business needs. In this case, I'm going to skip this option. So you can skip on, click on skip in the corner, uh, which I'm going to do right here. And the very next page will ask you if you want to create a website with a Wix ADI or if you want to create your website using the Wix editor. In our case, we want to go with the Wix editor. But just to give you a brief overview, the Wix ADI it will essentially create a website for you based on some questions that you answer to some questions around your business. So it could be what are what is the purpose of this website? What are you trying to do with your website? And it will kind of automatically create that website for you. You still have to go in and edit all the text and images, but it will do all of the hard work for you. But in this case, we want to do more customizations to our site. So what we'll do is just click on create your website with the editor. So just click on choose a template for now. Once you clicked on choose a template, you will see that we have a bunch of different templates to choose from. In this case, we want to make sure that we are creating or using a template that is made for our online store. So if you hover over the online store, the store category, you will have a bunch of different options. You'll have fashion and clothing, jewelry, arts and craft, home and decor, beauty and wellness, food and drinks, sports and outdoors, so on and so forth. So this is kind of about like, what are you trying to specifically sell on your website? In our case, let's just go with the example of a jewelry and accessory store. So I'm just going to click on this category right here. And then we'll have a bunch of different themes that we can choose from. And all of these look great. You'll have one that's for watches right here, one that's for bags. And obviously in these cases, even though there is a watch on this template right here, for example, you can still edit everything so that it looks uh, more branded towards your product. So it doesn't have to be specifically a watch website. So you can go ahead and change this, but this will at least give you an overview how this website would look like and the general theme of the site itself. And the same goes for the other categories as well. So let's say you are selling jewelry, but you found a template in the food and drinks that you like more. You can obviously go ahead and use one of the templates from in here as well. But in our case, I'm just going to go for the simple way of doing it. So we're just going to use a jewelry and accessory template that's specifically made for our jewelry. Once you have found a template that you like, you can go ahead and click on view. This will give you a small preview on how the site looks. And if you want a full demo, you can also click on the link down here. And this will give you the full demo on how the site looks. In my case, I like this theme and this template. So what I'm going to do is just go ahead and click on edit right in the corner. And when I do click on edit, 
what will happen is that we are going to open the Wix website editor. Once you have loaded up the Wix website editor, you will have the welcome to Wix unless you have created websites before. In our case, you're watching this video, so you're not going to need this quick tutorial. So you can just go ahead and click close. Then we will see our full website as a whole. You will see that we have a banner at the top. You will see a lot of different options. And at first it might seem that it's going to be super hard to get, get started and everything seems very complicated. But we're going to walk through step by step each and everything in here. So don't worry at the moment. The very first thing I think you should care about is going to be the editing tools that we have in front of us. So looking at the left side, we're going to have menus and pages. So these are going to be things that we can add onto our site. So menus and pages will be where we can manage our menus that we have on the site, which is going to be at the very top of our website right here, our main menu. And it's also going to allow us to add other pages. Our background option is going to add the options of changing the actual background of our website. Add will give us the option to add different elements to our site, which we're going to dive deeper into in just a minute. Then you will have theme manager, which is going to help you look at some of the settings that you can change within your theme. Then you'll have add apps. So this is kind of be like the app store on your phone. You can add new functionalities to your site specifically created by other developers. It doesn't have to be made by Wix. It can be made by other developers who made a specific app that you can install on your website to get a unique feature such as an Instagram feed. Then we'll have media, which is going to be where we can manage our images and upload images and upload videos and GIFs and icons. All of that is going to be within the media. Then we'll have start blogging. So adding a blog functionality to your website, you'll have the my store, which is you're going to manage all of your e-commerce settings. You'll have the bookings options, and then you will have a send business tools, which is going to be more marketing tools such as SEO. And that's going to be all of the things they will have on the very left side. Jumping to the right side of the editor, we have some other specific settings that we can use in order to edit our website better. So in here, you will see you have copy, you will have paste, you will have duplicate, you can remove an element, you can align it in the middle, so on and so forth. So on the right side, these are going to be more of design elements, which will help you assist the design of your site itself. And that is going to be the basics of the editing settings. Then at the very top, we'll also have the site, which allows you to save. You can preview your site, you can get feedback, publish, so on and so forth. Then you'll have settings so you can connect a domain, get a mailbox, upgrade your site to the premium plan, get found on Google, SEO, Favicon, business info, so on and so forth. These are going to be more of the backend information and settings. So this is something you might want to look at once you finish completing the design of your site, you can get started with some of the more in-depth settings of your website. And the very first thing we want to do today is go ahead and click on settings. And then we want to connect the domain. Currently, because we have a free plan with Wix, we will have a free domain, which is going to include vixsite.com slash my site in this case. And this you can obviously change to whatever you want. In my case, maybe I want it to be who is Bobbin, or you can connect a domain that you already own. Or if you get the premium package with Wix, you will get a free domain as well. But in my case, I'm just going to go with the free domain for now. And it's going to be who is Bobbin. I can go ahead and click save and continue. And then it's going to be published live. So now we can actually visit our site if you want to and see how it looks. But we're not done with the settings yet. So I'm just going to click on done. And then we're going to go back up to settings. And then we're going to click on upgrade. So in upgrade, you will have a bunch of different options when it comes to your website. You will have website plans and then you'll have business and e-commerce plans. In this case, because we are setting up an e-commerce website, we want to make sure that we get the e-commerce packages. So in this case, you will have a bunch of different features depending on what package you pick. In all of them, you will get the free domain. So if you do set up your site and you do get the package, you will get a free domain with the package as well. So in here, I would recommend you to just look through the different features and get a package that fits your business needs. In my case, I will go with the business basic package. I'm just going to go ahead and click on select. Then you'll have the option to select a billing cycle. You can pay every three years if you want, every two years, yearly or monthly. Depending on what you pick here, you do get some sort of discount depending on the length of your package. So here I would recommend you go with the yearly package because if you go with the yearly package, you do get a free domain. But maybe you already have a domain. Maybe you can go with the monthly package. But going with a yearly package, not only do you save money by doing so, but you will also get the free domain as well. So what I'm going to do is just click on the yearly package and then I will click on continue to check out. Then I will just fill out my payment information and I will be back with you in just a second. Once you have completed your package, you will have the option of picking your domain. 
So in this example, I'm just gonna go ahead and go with who is Bobbin dot com and then we can check if our domain is free which it is which is perfect uh, so i'm just going to go ahead and click on get it and then we'll have our very own domain set up then with the domain you can do as before you can choose a yearly package which is going to be three or you can go with the two years or three years to save some money on your domain in the future but in my case i want to go with the one year package i'm just going to do that right here okay once you are done with the payment of your domain as well as your package you will have this confirmation right here. So my domain, whoisbobbin.com is now connected to whoisbobbin. You can also go live with your website and so on and so forth. Uh, but what we're gonna do is just go back into our editor, which is gonna be the second tab up here. And then we're just gonna refresh the editor to make sure that we have all the premium settings that comes with our premium package. Once we have done that, we can start making the changes that we want to our site. So the very first page that we are on right now, which you can see in the left corner, if you look at the very top, you'll see all the different pages that we have on our site. At the moment, we are going to be on the home page. So if you want to make the changes to your home page, you can do so by clicking here. And then you can obviously click on collections if you want to make changes to the collection page, location, so on and so forth. Uh, but let's just start off with the home page. So on the home page, we can see that we have a bunch of different elements. We have the banner image at the top. We have a small text here in the middle with a box. We do have a button which says shop collection. And then at the bottom right here, we do have a slider gallery with our different products. The first thing we can do, so anything you see here on the site is editable. So every time you hover over something and then you click on it, you can see that some sort of setting shows up. So in this case, if I click on the header image, you can see that we have manage slides as well as change slide background. And you can see this header image does have two other slides as well. So we can skip through here just to see how they look as well. And I can see that I like the second picture more than I like the first one. So what we can actually do is manage slides right here. And when we manage slides, what we can do is actually rearrange these as well. So we can just drag and drop the second one to the very first one. And what will happen is this will be the very first slide that you'll see when you land on the website, which is fairly simple if you want to rearrange slides that you have in these kind of banner images. And other options you have as well is that you can obviously add new images to this banner. So if you want to change the slide background, you can do so by clicking on change slide background. Once you do so, you'll see that you have selected backgrounds, which are gonna be free images from Wix. You also have the option to go into color if you want the banner to be a specific color. You'll have the option to upload your own images or search for other free images from Wix, or you can make this banner into a video. So in case you have a short video that you want to showcase up here, you can do so as well. But in this case, I like the images that we have, but what I want to do is change the very text that we have on the, our homepage right here. So what I'll do is just click on the text and then I click on edit text and we'll get the text settings right here. So our current text is a new minimal gold collection. Maybe in my case, I want to change gold into silver because this is going to be a silver collection. So you can just go ahead and change that. Or if you just want to change the entire text completely, you can do so as well. Then diving in a little bit deeper into the settings of this text element, we have the option to change the heading of this text. So we can change it to a heading five or heading one, whatever we want to change it to. We're able to change the font right here. And if you don't find any font, so what you'll find with Wix is they have a bunch of different fonts, but if you don't find the fonts that you want for your site, you can always add your own fonts by uploading them directly down here. Then other than fonts, we can also change the size of this text. So as you can see, the first text will be a smaller text compared to the other one. So this is going to be 24 at the moment. And then the silver collection is at 28. But let's say we wanted to make the new minimal smaller. We can just highlight it and drag the size down. So maybe I want it to be 20, let's say. And now we just updated that. Then we have other options as well. So we can make this text bold if we want it to be bold. We can make it italic. We can make it underline. We can change the color of this text. So maybe I want it to be purple in this case. I can do so right here. Maybe because it's silver, I want it to be something similar to silver. So maybe like this. But as you can see, it's a bit hard to read. So maybe I'll go back to something similar to gold. Once I've picked a color, I do have other options as well. So if I want to link this text, for example, and adding a hyperlink, I can click on link down here. Maybe you want to add a highlight text behind it. 
So as I mentioned, it was a bit hard to read. So maybe you want to add something like this just to highlight the text a bit better. Then you also have the options to align the text. You can add it to bullet points, so on and so forth. And you also have the effects. But with all that being done, what we can do is jump down to the next element that we have, which is going to be the button right here. So by clicking on the button, as before, we will be able to change the settings of this element. So we can change the text right here or we can change where it's linked to. Maybe we want to update the call to action here. So instead of saying shop collection, maybe we want to make it shop our latest product or shop our latest this and that. Whatever it is you want to update this text to, you can do so by editing it right here. So maybe buy now or shop now. Whatever you want your call to action to be, you have the option to change it here. Then you'll also have the option to update the link. So where will people be taken to when they click on this button? That is something you can update by clicking on the link text right here. And what you'll see is that you will open up this window where you have a bunch of different options. So either we can make it none. So when people click on it, nothing will happen. We can also have a web address. So if you want to link to a specific uh, page somewhere, or maybe you want to link to another website, you can do so by doing it here. Then you will have pages where you can basically link to any page that you have on your site. So in this case, we probably want this shop collection button to link to our collection. So what we can do is click on collections right here, and then this button would link to our collection page. Other options you have is going to be anchors. You can link top and bottom. So when people click on it, they will either be taken to the top of the website or the bottom of the website. You'll have document if you want people to be able to download a specific file when they click on the button. And then you will have email and phone number. Pretty straightforward. If someone clicks on it, they will be able to email you directly or phone number is just to call you directly. But we want to keep this to a page linking to the collection page. So that is what we will add. And then we'll just go ahead and click done. Now, jumping down on our side, we do have this shop element right here. So what we can do is go directly on it and then we can manage our product. So this is going to dive deeper into the e-commerce setting of our site. So what we'll see is that this is going to be all of the current products that we have on our website. In this case, we can see that we have some example products already uploaded to our site. And what we can do is either remove all of these or if we want to keep them just as a reference until our website is live we can do so as well but in this case what i want to do is add a new product to our site so what i'll do is just click on new product in the top corner and then we can add either a digital file so if you're selling ebooks e or maybe printables or maybe you're selling a course or maybe you're selling print whatever it is that you're selling uh, that is a digital file or digital product you can click on digital file but in this case because we're selling jewelry we want to click on physical once you've clicked on physical you will see that we are currently in the product options so untitled product is going to be the name of the product itself so maybe this will be who is bobbin uh, silver necklace the name of our very first product is going to be who is bobbin silver necklace and that is going to be the name of the product itself so in this case just name it whatever your product is named then you can see we have the options to add videos or images to our product so what i'm going to do is just add images right here so i'm going to click on add images so what we see is that on site files you'll see the images that you have specifically uploaded to your site all of them will be shown right here but in our case we haven't uploaded any images yet so this is going to be empty and I don't have any pictures of jewelry, so I, I cannot really add any product images for now. So what I'm going to do is I am going to use the free pictures that we have from Wix. So if we click on media from Wix, we will have a bunch of different free images that we can use. And what I'm just going to search for is necklace right here. And then let's see what type of pictures we can find for this case. So as we can see, we have a bunch of different images here to choose from. Um, I probably want to try to find something that is similar to what a normal product picture would look like. I probably don't want to have someone in the image like this one right here. It doesn't really fit a product picture. But I do have some pictures I do like. I kind of like this one. So what I'll do is just click on it and then I can directly add it to the page. And once I've done that, we can see that we now have a new image added to our product. And that is going to be great for now. This is just a placeholder image. And you can add multiple images here as well. So if you want to add more images or maybe you want to add a short video in here as well, maybe you have some sort of brand campaign that you're doing with TikTok or maybe you have some 
influencer images you want to add in here as well. You can do all of that from here. Moving down, we have some more product information. So here we have the name. So it's going to be the name of the product, which you already picked. It's going to be who is Bob and Silver Necklace. Then you will have the ribbon, which is going to show up in your store. So ribbon can be anything from new arrival as the example right here. Or maybe you have a sale or maybe you can have a promo. So this you can kind of make whatever you want. In my case, I'm just going to make this to free shipping. And then what we can do is add free shipping. And by doing so, we can add it to different products later on as well. Then moving down, we have the price of our product. In my case, because I am based in the United Kingdom, this is going to be in pound. But it is in most cases going to be localized depending on where you are from and where your business is registered. So what we can do later on, if you don't want to charge your customers in your local currency, is that we can go into the website settings and change the currency that you want to get paid in. So if you want to get paid in dollars, you can change it to dollars. And if you want to get paid in something else, I don't know, Indian rupees, you can do so as well. So you don't have to really worry about this price right here. Just put the price you want to sell with your current currency, and then you can change it later on to whatever you want. In this case, I'm just gonna put the price as 200. Then you will have the option to prick on sale. So on sale will have the option to set a specific discount. So if you want this product to be on 10% discount, you will have the new price as 180 and that will update it directly on your site as well. Or you can have the option to make the discount a set price. So maybe you want it to be 50 pounds off or we'll automatically change it to 150. And then finally down here, we also have the descriptions. So this will be your short product description. It doesn't have to be short. If you want a long product description, you can make so as well. Uh, but just make sure you add some content here describing the product, the features and what it's good for. In my case, we have a necklace, so maybe I want to add some sort of story behind the necklace and the design behind the necklace. Maybe if it's 100% silver or maybe what kind of carrot it is if you're selling, I don't know, a diamond. Whatever it is, you want to add your description here just to give your customers a bit of detail about what the product is and what they can expect when they eventually get their product. Then going down, we have add additional info section. So here you can add your return policy, your care instructions, so on and so forth. So by clicking add info section, you can add the title of the section. So maybe this can be return policy. So what we can do is just change it to return policy. And then you can just copy and paste your return policy in here as well. Or if you want to write a specific return policy for this product, you can also do so. In this case, I'm just going to write test and then I'm going to click OK. The next one is going to be custom text. And this will kind of allow your customers to personalize their product. So in this case, we're selling necklaces. So maybe we are offering an engraved name on the necklace itself. So what we can do is add the custom text field option. And then we can say, what do you want on the necklace? And then we can set the character limit for this. So it can be 500 characters. And then maybe we have some kind of limits, limited space on our necklace because we cannot really write 500 characters on here. So what we can do is maybe limit it to 25. I think that's pretty realistic. I think most names are going to be under 25 characters in this case. And then if you want this to be mandatory, you can click right here. You can also add other fields as well. So if you want to add other questions that they have to answer, you can add more as well. Then moving on, we have other product options. So do we have different size, maybe different colors? What are the different materials we can pick from? In this case, we have a necklace. Usually necklaces only come in one size fits all. Uh, but in case you have different variations or maybe we have the option of purchasing this specific necklace in either gold or silver, then we could add down here either silver or gold. So let's do that right now. So just click on add options and then we can add color and then our color options are going to be silver and then we can add some sort of silver they already gave us one for free i think this one this silver right here looks pretty good and then we can add gold as well once you've added silver and gold or whatever else you want to add here so maybe you want to add size once you are done with that you can just click on add and then we'll have our two different options up what we also can do is connect images so when someone selects the color silver for example we can make sure that a image of a silver necklace would show up and if someone clicks on gold a gold image would show up or gold necklace uh, would show up for the customer. In this case, we're going to skip this part, but it's very straightforward. So if you want those specific features, you can just go ahead and click here. Then we also have the options to manage 
pricing and inventory for variants. So in this case, maybe our silver necklace is gonna be more expensive or our gold necklace could be more expensive than our silver one. So maybe we want to update our gold one to 250 while our, our silver one is gonna be 150. Then we also have the SKU. So if you want to add the SKU number here, we can add it to 0001 and this may be the gold one will be 0002. Then we have the status, we can make it in stock or not in stock and then the shipping weight as well. In this case, we don't want to add anything here. I don't have the shipping weight of this necklace, but just an example, let's say the necklace is one kilo each. There are very heavy necklaces here. We also have the option to track our inventory. So this can be a great way for you if you want to have another option to track your inventory. So how many necklaces do I have left? If you want this, you can click on track inventory, then you can add your inventory here. So maybe we have 10, silver necklaces and we only have five of our gold necklaces here and then once people start buying these products this will just automatically go down until you're out of stock once you're out of stock it will automatically update your website so you don't have any customers ordering your products when they're not in stock once that is done you can click apply and that will be all done at the very bottom we'll have the subscription option so if you want your customers to be able to pay for a subscription maybe you want them to pay five or ten dollars a month maybe a yearly fee for a delivery of a necklace every month so maybe you have some sort of subscription service you're trying to sell a monthly subscription service for necklaces or food or whatever service you're selling you can have the subscription offer down here as well but in our case we're not trying to sell any subscription model we're just selling our necklaces so we don't have to add the subscription service, but it's still here, which is a nice feature as well. Now going back up to the top, we also have the final options so you can add the collections. So what we will see is that collections, you have all products or if you want a new collection. So we do have another one called I'm a new collection or you can create a new collection for this one. So I'm just going to click on create collection and then I'm just going to call this one who is Bobbin. You can name this whatever you want. Once the collection name is edited, we can just add it like this. And once we are done, we can go ahead and click save. Now our product is live on our store. We have updated all of the settings that we need. You will see that we have some notifications showing up right here that we have to connect a payment method because we don't have a payment method at the moment. So what we can go ahead and do is click on add payment method at the top. And in our payment methods, you can see that we have a bunch of different options when it comes to accepting payments to our store. You also have the option up in the corner to change the location of your business. So maybe you're not in the United Kingdom. Maybe you are in United States, for example, you can just go ahead and click on United States and then you can choose that location. And that will also update your payment options as well. So we do have the option to accept through Wix payments. We can add PayPal payments, Alipay, so on and so forth. So just make sure you add the payment methods you want. I'm not gonna walk through the specific settings right here, but just make sure you pick the payment methods that you want for your store. So once you have set up your payment methods, what we'll also be able to jump into right here is that we have our finances. So by jumping into finances, we're just gonna take a quick look. So here you will see all of the payments that you receive from your clients. You'll have your price quote, you'll have your invoices as well as financial integration. So financial integration will help you with essentially your taxes and so on and so forth. There are some kind of apps that you can connect right here that will make it easier for you to keep track of the payments that you have and just make it easier for you to keep track of your taxes. Uh, in this case, I don't want to add anything specific here. So I'm just going to go back into the main menu. Then we have the analytics and reports. In here, we can see our sales report, our traffic reports, our people, so on and so forth. Then we'll have marketing and SEO. So this will be the marketing options that will basically help you set up all of the things that you need for the marketing side of your site. Then you'll have your customer management where you'll be able to send updates to your clients. Maybe you have a new collection going live and you want to send an email to your clients, updating them. Oh, we have a new necklace. Uh, come shop our latest necklace in gold, uh, whatever you want to send to your customers. Then you also have the store orders. So all the orders that you have on your site as well as your abandoned cart. So people who put something in their shopping cart on your site, but didn't complete a purchase. Then you have store products, which we were at just now, where you have your product inventory and collections. And then you have the dashboard will give you the overview of your store in general. Once we have done all this, what we can do is just close this down. 
and you can see that our new product will have been added right here and finally you have your payment method integrated as well which is great what we might want to do right now is make sure we edit the other pages as well and making sure that everything kind of fits the theme of our brand and our website so we can go into collections to see the collections that we have. So our collection page will essentially just be a list of all the products that we have. In this case, you can see that we added our latest product will be the Who is Bob and Silver Necklace. So you can see that it's working, so that's great. So if we want to update the design of this kind of product listing element, what we want to do is just click on it and then click on settings. Once we open the settings, we'll have the option to change this collection. So maybe we want this to only show our Who is Bob and collection. What we can do is just click on who is Bobbin and as you can see, it will only show the product that we just created. We also have other options as well. I'm just really gonna go, go back to all products because I want some more products to just show examples here. Once we have done that, we also have the option to change our layout right here. So if you want to change the layout that we have for our specific products, we can do so by clicking right here and changing the product style. In my case, I do like this one. It looks good. Uh, so I'm gonna keep that one. Then we want to look at how images are resized. Either we can crop them or we can make them fit. So making them fit will just will essentially show the true size of the images. In this case, I want to crop them because I want to make sure all of them have the same size. It looks better from a user perspective as well. Image ratio will essentially give you the option to change more of the style and how it looks. One on one usually looks the best, uh, but obviously you do have some options to choose from right here. So just go with the one that you think looks best for your store. Product text alignment. So if you want your text to be on the side, you can do so. Maybe you want it to be on the left, on the right, sorry. Or if you want it to be in the middle. In my case, I like it in the middle. So I'm gonna keep middle. Then moving down, we also have the columns. So if you want maybe three products uh, in one column, you can make it to three. Or if you want the rows to only be four rows, we can make it four. Maybe you want it to be one product or two products per row. As you can see, it kind of updates the images right here. And because these images are not very high quality, they will be very blurry. So you want to make sure you upload high quality images right here so they're not blurry in your site as well. I'm just going to go back to having four images because it looks the best with the current images that we have. Other options you have is going to be spacing. So the spacing in between your products, if we want it to be higher, we can do so and we kind of reshape the size of the images as well or if you want it to be lower maybe you want the products to be super close to each other just one pixel away we can do so as well then we'll have the product info padding this will kind of add some padding on the info that you have on your product and as you can see we'll kind of make it more centered ar around the image itself uh, which I kind of like I like it to be honest so I'm just going to keep it like this moving on we have feather settings and as you can tell by now, we have a bunch of different settings. There's so many things you can change on your site. So you can stay in here for hours if you really want to and change every little thing and making sure that everything looks and feels the way that you want your site to look like. And this gives you a lot of flexibility and a lot of creativity has to come in here to give you those options on how you want your site to look like. So jumping over to settings, we have the hover options. We can do our zoom. So when someone hovers over the product, it will kind of give it a quick zoom. It will not show up because we're in the editor, but once you are on the site, it will give you a preview of how it looks. We can also do the border. So when someone hovers over, it will show up with a border. You can swap images. So essentially this will just change to another image of the product, which a lot of e-commerce stores have, where you hover over and you see a second image of the product as well which I kind of like. Uh, in my case, I like the zoom one. So what I'm going to do is just keep the zoom. Then what is displayed if you want to display the product name or not? So in this case, if I don't want to display it, I can just remove it right here. Maybe I want to remove the price as well, as well as the name and price divider as well. But let's go back and have them all loaded in. Then view more products. So at the bottom right here, normally you can have load more button or you can have pagination or you can have infinite scroll. So infinite scroll will essentially just be you can scroll forever. It just keeps loading and loading. In this case, I like load more. So I'm just going to keep that and then add to cart button. If you want to add it, add to cart button right here, you can do so. So just add it like this and that will add it directly on this short collection page. Finally, you also have the add the product options. So in this case, we'll have the gold option as we had before. 
and then you can see we also have some other options as well with size down here but with that being said we can jump into tax so we can add our tax so out of stock we can add load more we have the sign elements we can change so if you want to change the background opacity the fonts the text color the text color of the price compared compared to the previous price you have a bunch of different options here that you can just go in and change maybe you want to change the ribbon up here i would definitely change it i don't think it looks that great this specific ribbon color so i would definitely change that you have filters you can add so you can add show filters and you can allow your clients to filter by maybe price or color or size and you can add your custom filter as well then you'll have your sorting so if you want your customers to be able to sort by maybe most popular or best reviews or newest added or high to low you can add all of these different filtering options as well then finally we have quick view so adding quick view will give the option to kind of get a summarized view for your clients when they click on the product itself before having to go to the product page itself i kind of like the quick view because it necessarily you don't just because you click on the image doesn't necessarily mean you want to get go to the full page maybe you just want some quick information so this can be a good option to add as well and the very last option will be manage so here you will have manage your store and manage your collections just a quick way to go back to where we were before where we had our store settings and our collections as well but once that is done and we've made all the updates we want we have made the final changes to our collection page and as before as well just to give you a quick tip at the very top everything as you see you can edit it so if you want to change the collection up here we can change it we can change this line right here so many different things we can change going back into our pages we have locations which can be the locations of all our different stores we have about so we can have an about section about who we are and what kind of necklaces we're selling and why we are selling them we have our contact page so right here we can update our contact information and the way you want your your customers to be able to contact you and as before each and every element you just have to click on it and then you can edit these texts once you're happy with your store what we can do to publish it live and have your customers be able to visit your site just go up to the very right corner and click on publish and once we click on publish all of the changes that we've made will be published live on our new domain so what we can do is actually click on view site and we can take a quick preview on how our site looks we did not make a lot of design elements here we walked through a lot of the settings behind the scenes that goes through setting up your site when it comes to the design elements and what the minor changes we made at the moment everything looks great in my opinion we have the shop collection page we can jump over here take a quick look at our products the who is bob and product we added if we click on it we get the quick preview so what do you want on the necklace maybe i want who is bobbin on it so we can do that right here i want it in gold as well so i'm going to pick gold maybe you want it in silver add it to cart you can view more details to go to the full product page add to cart by now return policy we did not add anything specific but this you can press up and down to get more details and then you will have the product information on here as well so right now everything looks great i'm very happy with the layout of this store obviously there's a bunch of different design elements that you have to walk through this tutorial would have been 10 hours long if i would have walked you through all of the settings but the settings that we walk through will give you a great start to begin with when it comes to the design elements it will be fairly straightforward for you to just get started and update the images that you want so before you publish your site live what i would recommend you to do is just walk through your site make sure you update all of the text content make sure your images are specific to your store and unique to your store and make sure you have good payment options for your customers so what payment methods are customers usually using in your country so what you can do is actually look at some bigger competitors and look at what payment methods they're offering and look at if you can offer something similar to that payment method so the final thing we want to make sure we set up is going to be our shipping as well as our taxes so in order to get to our taxes and shipping options what we'll have to do is go to the very top of our editing site then we'll go to settings and then go to my dashboard once we have opened the my dashboard overview you will see a lot of things that surround your site overall so you'll have add your first product already done set up payment method we already did this 
and then set up shipping regions and publish site, so on and so forth. So this will kind of give you an overview of your site in general and what you've done on your site so far. But what we want to click on in order to get to our taxes as well as shipping options is to go into our settings of our site. So let's just click on settings. Then we'll see a lot of settings when it comes to the back end of our site. So website settings, business info, language and region, roles and permissions. If you want to add someone else to manage your site, accept payments, store shipping, store taxes, store checkout, order settings, order email notifications, store policies, invoice and quotes. What is important for us right now is going to be our store shipping as well as our store tax. So what we'll just do is click on the store shipping first. In the store shipping options, we'll have our shipping and fulfillment. So we have our shipping regions. In this case, I already set up a domestic one for the United Kingdom, and then we have an international one for the rest of the world. In these settings, what you'll have the option to do is also use fulfillment services. So if you do have a fulfillment facility that is fulfilling all of your orders, you do have the option to add a fulfillment service down here. But for the sake of this tutorial, what we'll do is just we'll set up our shipping manually. And this means essentially that you will do the shipping yourself. So in order to add a shipping region, we'll have the option to either edit the one we currently have. In some cases, you don't already have a shipping region. So you can just go ahead and click on add region. But for our case right here, we'll have the domestic one, United Kingdom. This is where the business is based, based on the settings I picked for the site. And then we'll have the international, which is going to be for the rest of the world. So what we'll do is just go to our domestic one. So we'll edit our shipping rule. In our domestic options, we can see that we have United Kingdom selected. And this includes four regions. So if I click on the four regions right here, we can see that we have England, Northern Ireland, Scotland, as well as Wales. Right here, if we want to exclude some region because we don't offer shipping there, we can do so by just unselecting one. So Northern Ireland, for example. In this case, we're offering to all of them. So we'll just keep all of them and then go ahead and click done. Then once that is done, we can go ahead and go to the shipping options. So down here, we do have a flat rate setup. So what you can pick is either you can go with a flat rate. You can go to free shipping on all the orders. You can do a rate by weight. So this will be calculated based on the weight of the products that the customer decides to purchase. So let's say for our necklace, for example, we put it as one kilo per necklace and that shipping rate will be really, really expensive dependent on the weight of the product. But obviously here, if you set up your products correctly and the correct weight, then the rate by weight could potentially be the way you can charge your shipping. Then you also have the rate by price It's going to be calculated based on the total price of the customer's order. So in some cases, if you have someone ordering above 100, maybe you want to offer them a free shipping. Or if they are ordering under $100, maybe you want to charge them, let's say, $5, for example. Finally, we have the rate by product. So this will essentially be a shipping rate depending on each and every product in your store. This is a bit more tedious to set up because you have to go through each and every product. But if you do have very specific products, so if you're selling a car, for example, a car would be really really expensive to ship compared to a necklace so this is already dependent on what the products you are selling and how you want to charge the shipping but for the sake of this video we're going to go with the flat rate which i already decided this essentially would just be a fixed fee that all customers will have to pay dependent on some rules. So going down, once we've selected our shipping method or shipping, how our shipping is calculated, we can see that we have the shipping option name. So shipping option name is just going to be up to you what you want to call your shipping options. In my case, I decided to go for standard DHL. You can obviously rename this whatever you want, but I just want to include this here. So let's say we're using a DHL. So maybe this is what we want to name our shipping service, but it could also be like standard shipping or standard international shipping. Whatever you pick here, it doesn't really matter. It's just up to you what you want to call the shipping. Then you can add your estimated delivery time for the shipping method. Obviously it's dependent on what shipping method you're using, what supplier you're using. But in this case, I just put three to five business days. Then you have the option to add your shipping rate for this order. And it's going to be five dollars or five pounds per order what i then did is add a offer so we are going to offer our customers a free shipping once they order something over a hundred dollars so you can do that by just clicking this option right here if you don't want to offer it you can just not click it but in this option we want to offer it to people who buy over a hundred dollars then i have also added another shipping option which is going to be our next day delivery and in this case, we only have one business day. So this is going to be our more expensive option. But if someone wants to get their order fast, they can pay for this, which is going to be $25. Obviously, $25 is up to you what you are charging for these shipping rates. 
I just put 25. And then I also offered the free next day delivery for orders above $250. Then you do have the option to add more shipping options. Maybe you're using many different providers. So you can add more shipping options here if you do want to as well. Then at the very bottom, we had add a handling fee to every order. So if you do want to charge a handling fee for each and every order, you can select this right here. In my case, I just put it at five cents per order. And in this case, this is something that is fairly popular if you're using a fulfillment service. So maybe you want to cover the fulfillment service fee in the order itself and push that cost onto the customer. You can do that by just filling it out here. Finally, we have two options at the bottom, which is gonna be the local delivery. So let's say you are based in New York City and you have a specific shipping option for people who live in New York City or in the local area you can add a local delivery service here as well. And local pickup is fairly straightforward. If you do have a store or some kind of location where your customers can come in, pick up their order and have it fulfilled that way, you can also add that option right here. Once your shipping options are finished and complete, you can go ahead and click save. And then you want to do the same for either your international one or you can add more shipping regions. So if you have a specific price for a specific region, you can go ahead and add a new region add the shipping options, add the rates, and then you are done. Once we are done with all of this, we can just go ahead and go back into our settings. And then we're gonna look into our store taxes. We can see that I already filled out one of these taxes right here. If you haven't done this before, it's just gonna be empty, but it's gonna be fairly straightforward for, for you to do as well. So store tax is essentially gonna be how you manage and collect the taxes of the sales you do throughout your store. There is an option with the premium plan that you have. So if you use the premium plan, you can actually use your automate your taxes option. And by doing this, there's gonna be a free integration with your premium plan, which is gonna automate all of your taxes for you. It's very efficient, it's super smart. But for the sake of this tutorial, we're just gonna stick with the on-site VIX options. I do recommend you check out the automated taxes. It makes it so smooth for you and it's very easy compared to setting it up for each and every country. But now looking at adding our countries manually, you have the option to set up each and every country on where we are collecting taxes on our sales. I already set up the United Kingdom one, but what we can do is just go ahead and add a new country as well. So by clicking on adding a new country, we can select a new country right here. So what I'll do for the sake of this video is just add Sweden in here as well. So then I can go ahead and click add. And then you can see you already have your tax rates right here. And tax rates, especially in Sweden, is dependent on what type of product you're selling. Is it a digital product? Is it a physical product? What kind of product is it? Uh, it's really dependent on a lot of different things, depending on how much tax you should charge your customers. And this will really depend on where you are living what country you're charging taxes in. So it can kind of get complicated right here, but this shouldn't be a major problem. What you can do is just go ahead and go to Google, search up the tax rates, and then just implement them here. But for this case, we have a 25% tax rate, which is fine. Then you have the option to add taxes on digital products. So in some countries you don't charge tax on digital products. And in some cases you do. In this case, we do charge tax on digital products in Sweden. So I'll keep this one here. And now finally, you have the option to add taxes on shipping. And we do charge taxes on shipping as well. So I'm just gonna go ahead and click select. And then you can see at the very top, we have collect the same rate for entire country. So this is something to think about if you are based in, let's say the United States. So I do know that there are different tax rates depending on what state you are in. I'm not sure how this should be set up when it comes to your store. This is something you will have to do your research on. But if you do live in a country where different states have different sales taxes, make sure you set this up. In this case, we're just gonna charge for entire country. It will be the same tax everywhere. And then once that is done, we can go ahead and click save. Finally, on this tax page, we'll also have the tax settings. So this is the option to add taxes either before the person comes to the checkout, they already have the product price, including tax, or if the person adds the product to their cart and then go to checkout, you will then see the final price, including tax. So the option here is that either we can do no, add the taxes at checkout or yes, tax is already included. So if you added your products already and the price with tax included, go ahead and click on yes, tax is already included, or you can go ahead and click no tax at checkout. 
This way the taxes will show up when the user adds a product to the cart and go to the checkout and then they will see the final price. Something I would recommend here is to add your products with the tax already included directly on the site. Otherwise, when the user adds something to their cart, they're like, oh, it's so cheap. And then they go to their cart and then they see the updated price with, let's say, 25% higher. That would obviously have an impact on your conversion rate because users will be like, why is it so expensive all of a sudden? It was just this price before and now all of a sudden it's higher. Why do I have to pay this? And so on and so forth. A lot of people have a lot of questions when it comes to the taxes. So what I do recommend you to do is just add your taxes beforehand and that way you will also not have a negative impact on your conversion rate. But once all of this is done and you've selected all of the settings and set up the taxes for each and every country that you want to collect tax from, then your store is essentially done for taking in customers because we have our payment method set up, we do have our taxes set up, and we do have our shipping options. Now, as you saw before, there are a lot of different settings behind the scenes, I would say, in the settings of your website. You can go ahead and check those out one by one. They're fairly straightforward. It's more or less gonna be more information about your store. And once all of that is done, your design and everything is ready to be launched, you can just go ahead and publish your site and start taking customers to your store. But that's gonna be it for this video. Thank you all for watching. Please make sure to leave a like on this video and leave a dislike if you didn't like it. If you do have any comments on how to set up your e-commerce website, please make sure to leave them in the comments down below. I try to answer as many comments as I can. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the channel so you don't miss out on any other content just like this one. But with that being said, thank you for watching and I'll see you guys in the very next video.